Red Leader is perhaps the most enigmatic character in the Edgeworld universe. He's loomed in the background of so many episodes, and is involved in one of the most important arcs in the series, yet is only ever named dropped once. And with the series over, the question still remains. Who is Red Leader? Before we begin, I'd like to say that most of the information here is either sourced from Tomscar or the Eswold Wiki. This video is really just an analysis of these sources, and I highly recommend that you search out this information for yourself if you are interested. Also note that much of this information is just speculation, but it's speculation grounded in evidence and implication. With that said, note that there will be spoilers ahead, and we can continue with the video. Now. If you were just a casual viewer of Edsworld, you would be forgiven for not knowing who Red Leader is, and that's because he's never actually appeared in the show himself. Rather, he is a long-running easter egg of sorts. But in this video, I will try to convince you that he is not only one of the most important easter eggs in the series, but his existence will make you rethink the show as you know it. Intrigued? Let me show you more. The first known mention of Red Leader is in the 2010 episode, What the Future, when Tom says, It's a good job Red Leader had a second time travel device. It was assumed by many that Red Leader was a pseudonym for the future version of Tord, one of the original characters from the earliest episodes. But at the time, not much else was known. Red Leader was never actually mentioned again, but hints to his existence continued years later. Keen-eyed viewers may have noticed this symbol in some episodes, a red, R-shaped spray tag featuring two spikes. It's not hard to draw the resemblance to Tord, with the red colour scheme and a shape resembling Tord's hair, and you would be right to draw that conclusion. Its first appearance is on the tail of a plane in The Snoga, alongside this number, a number identical to the plate on Tord's car in 25 feet under the seat. This could mean one of two things, either this plane just so happens to have the same number plate as Tord, or the plane actually belongs to Tord. A pretty bold claim, but it's something to take into account. Flash forward to Fun Dead, where we see this symbol again painted in blood on the side of an arcade cabinet. A red, R-shaped logo with two spikes. Its third and final appearance is in The End, when you see it on the underside of Tord's capsule, not read this time, but from Tord himself. So it's extremely likely that this symbol belongs to Tord, but who are these guys? This symbol is consistently linked with them, always appearing when they do. But what are they doing coming to Tord's assistance at the end of the final episodes? Meet Paul and Patrick, two of the more obscure characters in the Edsworld mythos. You may remember them from moving targets in some of their earliest speaking roles. Did you hear something? It's just the sound of no one caring. Paul in particular is actually based off the guy who animated much of the Edgeworld legacy and is a long-standing easter egg looming in the background of several episodes throughout the series shown in this soldier-like uniform. So what does this have to do with Tord I hear you asking? Well, in the Snoga it's Paul and Patrick that are piloting Tord's plane. Not to mention, they jump out of the plane with one other person, Tord Paps. In Fun Dead, they are fighting off zombies with a distinctive Tord shaped shadow in the top left. Not to mention, they are there when Tord is defeated in the end. And of course, what is Tord wearing in his wanted poster? A uniform identical to that worn by the other two soldiers. Tord is their general. He is the one overseeing their acts. He is the one that is leading his very own Red Army. So now that we have all the puzzle pieces in place, we can piece together a rough story as to what happened to Tord, the purpose of Paul and Patrick, and the true story behind Red Leader. After seeing their weapons in moving targets, the gun-obsessed Tord leaves the Edgeworld gang and adopts the name Red Leader. He recruits Paul and Patrick into his Red Army, a terrorist organisation intent on world domination. They use radioactive substances as shown in the Snoga and Hillary Artillery as shown in Fun Dead. Disguised as his former self, 
he revisits his old home where he retrieves his giant robot. He nearly gets away with it but is stopped by Tom. Wounded and battle scarred, he takes the hand which was once used against him and replaces it with his own arm, becoming a Darth Vader-esque leader as shown by this concept art. He becomes an evil dictator, mastering time travel and controlling even the ones who once rose up against him. A robotic, uncaring overlord named the Red Leader. So is that it? Is this where our story ends? The evil Tord winning and dominating the world? Well, not exactly. This is indeed where the Edsworld story stops, but it's where a new story begins. So we're editing last week right now, and I just realized that I missed out an incredibly significant detail, uh, which is an explanation as to why Tord came back and why he was evil. And this may surprise you, but this was not actually my idea alone. This was mine and Ed's plan for long before he died. Um, back in 2008, I had an idea for a series I wanted to create called Super Average. Um, the hope was that after university I would move to London, uh, Ed would animate it and write it with me. But aside from you know creating some concept art and me writing a pilot script with another friend, it never got off the ground. I moved to London, but Ed died shortly after. But our plan was to have the main villain of the show be this character called Red Leader. The implication, unsurprisingly, being that this is what Tord had gone on to become after leaving Edsworld, or at least the character of Tord. You know, that's why this character is name dropped in What the Future. But obviously, it never happened. But, you know, here's some <laughs> concept art for the character held. <sighs> so I just thought that might be a little something interesting for you to know is that. This was actually something that we wanted to do, and I thought it would be interesting in Edsworld Legacy to, you know, utilize this uh, villain, maybe imply him, and then maybe go on to use him in Super Average. But seeing the reaction to Edsworld Legacy, I have decided to scrap this character entirely now, um, because you know, yes. Uh, it is disrespectful to the original voice actor and also Ed's gone <laughs> and I think it's best if I cut ties with the show permanently but yeah Red Leader always supposed to be a thing the person in that video was Tom Scar the voice of Tom in the show and the creator of the Asdaf movie series this is what he later had to say in his blog in 2008, I came up with the idea for a series named Super Average, a show which I still plan on making one day. The dream was to write it with Ed and have him lead the animation. For obvious reasons, we never got the chance to work on it together. We had, however, planned on fusing it with Edsworld, setting it in the same universe and having the big bad villain be a fellow named Red Leader. Whilst we were never going to reveal the identity of this villain, it wouldn't have taken a rocket scientist to figure out. With Ed gone, development on Super Average was put on hold whilst we worked on Edsworld Legacy. However, I always knew that one day, Red Leader would live on in Super Average. So we kept throwing little hints to the greater narrative into the Legacy episodes. The Red Army, the Red Leader R logo, etc. With Edsworld Legacy over, I've picked up work on Super Average again. The characters have been designed, including Red Leader, pitch has been made and a pilot script is currently in production. However, with consideration of the criticisms and hindsight from Ed's world, I've decided to scrap the character of Red Leader. The design and character will no doubt be repurposed if the series begins, but Red Leader will never be seen again. This is not only to distance myself from Edsworld, as it is time for me to do so, but also to relieve the character of Tord from my control." End quote. So what does this mean for Edsworld? It means that this is not the end, not really. It brought a potential new beginning, one where Tord is the main antagonist and the story of Red Leader is continued. If Super Average does pick up, which I hope it will, then we will all know who is really underneath that mask. Whilst he may no longer be Tord or Red Leader, in our hearts we will always know that it will be Ed's world, and that Ed's world will keep on spinning. <laughs>